the computer is starting to come together now. I have a display, a keyboard, and a place for some graphics. This is the computer. I've got my flags, and I've got a few bits here in order to control the loading. And here are the registers. Now, before I go any further, I'd like to have a, a big shout out for Timothy Morgan, who has helped me quite considerably over the last couple of months. So thank you very much for that. Uh, he's come up with some excellent circuits and he's allowed me uh, to use them. So thank you for that. Now, I'm going to show you an example here of what I have uh, running at the moment. So I spent a bit of time doing my assembler, as I mentioned the last time. Now, I'm, no, I'm not any kind of a, a hardcore coder, uh, and this was my first attempt at a, a Python uh, assembler. So I've got it working, and I'm quite happy with the way it works. Now, it might not be a particularly nice piece of code, but I'm not really bothered. I'm just happy that I can get it to work. So let me bring up uh, an example of the kind of code I have here. So this is a, an assembler program. So it's just simply um, a, a text file. So what we can do is we, if we type in the origin here, so I think you can just about see my mouse and you see it at the top left hand corner. So if you notice it's got origin 0 cross 8000. So that's the start of our um, program. And the program that I've written here, what it does is it allows you to write information into the keyboard and then it will read the information from the keyboard. It will save it in memory in ASCII, and then it will read that ASCII value back out. Now, what I've done is I've, I've got it to read it out backwards. Okay, so it will then print it up in the display backwards. Now, tomorrow, I'm hoping to have this graphics up and have a few fonts and a few um, letters in with uh, a, a particular font so that I can then have the letters actually displaying here up in the uh, graphics on the screen. Uh, so I'll hopefully get that done tomorrow. But as it stands here, this little bit of code allows us to read those values in in ASCII, save them to memory, and then uh, print them off on the display. And you can see here that the assembler has got um, the option of having uh, an uh, EQU directive I also built in something called a um, DS, Define Storage Directive, and a, a DC, Define Constant Directive. So, although those are not shown in here, but they are, they are actually quite handy. And you can see that I've also built in the option for looping, so I can jump between these different loops. And also the uh, labels that we see here. Um, I can put labels in and the labels will be replaced. So whenever I run this, uh, it's just a matter of going into the assembler and pressing run. And you can see here I get um, my output. So this is my output here in hex. And I out output that to a file that I, I, went, I then load into the uh, CPU. But first of all, I'll show you the pass one of the assembler. So on the right hand side, we have the assembly language code, and on the left hand side, we have the first pass. And you can see that in the first pass of the assembler, I've replaced all of the labels with actual values and it's worked out all of the relevant addresses for all of the jumps. So I'm quite pleased that all of that works. So after the first pass, the second pass then generates all of the uh, assembly, the um, uh, hex values, 
which I just showed you a, a second ago. So that's all of these hex values here. Now I can load this into the CPU. So I'll head up in and I'll put that in there just now. Open and that's it. So it saves it in a, a hex file, a, a, a text file here. Okay, so that's the program all up and loaded. And what I'll do is I'll come in here and I'll I'll type something into the keyboard. Um, let's have a look. I think what I'll do is oh I can't think about it. Just a just a little second to write this down. Right, okay. <laughs> so I'll type in uh, that there and uh, D L R O W. So you can guess what I'm I'm doing here. Um, o L L E H. Okay, so I've, I've typed this in, and now whenever I run the program, it will read this into memory as the ASCII um, equivalent for these values, and then it will print them out on the display backwards. Okay, so if I just do simulate, tick enable, and I can speed the whole thing up a little bit as well. Let's see, that's well, actually at full speed at the moment. So you can see it reading these values out. So it reads them out once at a time. And this is the actual ASCII value down here, which it puts into uh, memory locations. Now, once it's worked through all of these, it then puts them back out here uh, round the opposite way. So if everything works all right, <laughs> and you can just about see it, maybe make it a little bit bigger, you can see that it is actually typing out hello world. Maybe not the fastest machine in the world, but it doesn't matter. You can see that it does actually work and it does um, output the value round the other way. Now I can show you whereabouts in memory that all this is held. So we head back into here and this is the memory here. So I edit this. So, I head back straight up. So the values that are held, they're held here. So th this is the ASCII text, text for Hello World in this line here. So it loads it into these positions and then I read it back out of these positions backwards. Uh, and then I load it into the display. And you can see here at this level, uh, I've, I've used uh, the existing uh, input-output devices. So there's going to be an input device here for the keyboard, and there's going to be the output device for the display. So both of these are getting used, and both of them you've just seen working. Now, I've got to build in one for the uh, graphics as well, but the graphics isn't just as straightforward. There's a few options. Now again, uh, this is not really my circuit design, this is uh, Timothy Morgan's circuit design, um, but I've taken it and uh, I've tweaked it just a little bit, but it's got two options here um, in order to load up uh, the display. Okay, so this is the first option here, which whenever I go to the course, I'll have one of these or maybe both of them and I'll talk through them. Okay, and that's the other option here. So that's where I'm at at the moment. I am just, as of, well, tomorrow, I hopefully I'll have the ability to read out these values from the keyboard and actually have um, a graphic display of the actual letters. Um, so that's where I'm at at the moment. It's kind of coming together. I'm quite happy with it. It took me a long time to go through the uh, addressing modes and it took a long time for me to build up the assembler. But I feel like I'm kind of turning the corner here 
and we're getting something that's starting to look like a, a computer. But there's still a lot of stuff to do in it, but it won't be done on the second course. So uh, there will be a third course where I bring together my cortic algorithm and also the floating point unit. And it will allow us to work with um, uh, real numbers. Okay, so decimal numbers. And, uh, but that's again, that's, that's for the next course. We've still got plenty that I can do with this on this course here. Um, and there's a lot of the functionality, for example, for um, subroutines um, that, and using the stack that I haven't actually um, started to program uh, in any detail. But I will start doing that at the same time as I finish off the videos for the second course. And hopefully as well, I'll have a nice longer piece of programming um, that will show up uh, the, the ability of the, the CPU. It will show you exactly what it can do. Um, so that's where I am. Uh, I'm going to crack on tomorrow and uh, I'll catch you later. Goodbye.